hari bersubuh. Tonight on First at Nine this Wednesday, the 10th of January 2024. Creditor talks. Negotiations with external commercial creditors to be finalized over the next few months. Policy rates to be maintained until market rates drop, says CBSL Governor. Road to polls. President Ranil Vikram Singh is selected as the candidate for the upcoming presidential elections from the UNP Working Committee. Further indicates that presidential elections will take place in September of 2024. Terrorism Bill. New anti-terrorism bill tabled in Parliament, repealing the Prevention of Terrorism Act. Princess Diaries. UK's Princess Anne lands in Sri Lanka for a three-day official visit. Obe Vishwasi Dino Sinsudain. Then, Lagamethi Pharmacy in Labad at the Hacker. Near the Malt Sare Samagam Naliban Malt. Dang Rupiah Hatsia Panaha Kermanai. This is Ada Verna First at Nine. From Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening, happy Wednesday, and welcome to today's edition of Other Derana's English News. First at nine, I'm Jonathan Benedict. Let's take a look at our top stories for the day, starting with our CBSL Governor story. Sri Lanka's Central Bank Governor, Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe, confirmed today that external debt negotiation discussions are continuing with commercial creditors, and an agreement is expected to be reached over the next few months. Commenting on the inflation resulting from the policy initiatives of the government, Governor Virasinghe said that the central bank is dedicated to maintaining the Colombo Consumer Price Index based inflation at around 5% as agreed with the Ministry of Finance last year. He also said that policy interest rates will be maintained at current levels, current market levels till market lending rates are on par with the CBSL policy rates. Policy reforms have started to reflect in government finances in 2023 in terms of all deposits. There has been notable improvement in, on one hand, the tax collections, the revenue collection, as well as some management of expenditure, and also with debt restructuring, I think there is a significant improvement. And also last year, government has been able to record, compared to expect a small deficit. That's a significant improvement. And also on the other side of the reforms, not only the fiscal, the cost reflective pricing mechanism, especially on the, in the utility area, especially managed, provided by state-owned business enterprises, mainly CPC and electricity. That's also uh, an important reform that was introduced by the government uh, last year. The government successfully completed the domestic debt optimization operation, as you all know. And also, in relation to external debt restructuring, agreements in principle was reached with the official creditor committee and also with the Exim Bank of China for debt restructuring. At the meantime, good faith negotiations are continuing with other commercial creditors to reach an agreement in principle as early as possible within the next couple of months. While increasing the autonomy of the central bank, the Central Bank Act enhanced accountability of the central bank in relation to its policy action. Now, we are bound by an agreement signed between the Minister of Finance and the Central Bank to maintain Columbia consumer price-based quarterly headline inflation at 5%, subject to a tolerance level of plus or minus 2%, which means plus 7 and 3% broadly within that range. In line with our monetary framework, policy actions of the Central Bank would continue to be directed towards achieving its primary objective of maintaining domestic price stability, while facilitating the economy to reach its potential growth. Multiple actions would aim at maintaining CCPIBS headline inflation at 5% as agreed to the government under the multiple framework uh, that we signed last year for next three years. Currently, the multiple stance remains accommodative, as I already mentioned, we started easing cycle June last year. And the latest reduction of policy interest rates in November 2023 and further is entered a force in the near term because we saw that gradually inflation now uh, ticking up because of the some of the administrative measures. As we said, we have small force at, at that point as we announced last time. This should also allow sufficient space for one deposit transmission to take full effect and to prevent any undue pressures on the economy. So one of the reasons our policy actions have not been fully transmitted into the market lending ways. So we, uh, during a post period, we hope that there will be full transmission and then we can take 
extract copy of via into so outlook and then take next actions going forward a change in the course of monetary action may not be warranted as inflation expectations remain well anchored although underlying inflation demand pressures remain subdued still we see demand pressures is still subdued central central bank will remain vigilant of any development that could challenge inflation outlook so that monetary action can be proactively taken to ensure that domestic price stability is maintained which is most important the proposed anti-terrorism bill, which will replace the current Prevention of Terrorism Act, was presented to Parliament by Minister of Justice Dr. Vijay Das Rajapaksha. On the 5th of September 2023 last year, Cabinet approved the publishing of the anti-terrorism bill, which was revised in accordance with the suggestions and opinions received by different parties in the Government Gazette to be tabled in Parliament. During the Parliament debate, Parliamentarian of Tamil Arasu Karji S. Sridharan said that the bill is detrimental as it aims to suppress other avenues similar to the struggle that took place in 2022. <laughs> Anal in the Natalie in the Dalever Haladene, Sindika Villa, Sail Perta Villa, Palamurai, Naninekri and Urkala Chula Lamindri Krade, Arakalaya Poratam in the Arasangatai, Alangola Partir, Arakalaya Poratam in the Irkan the Pala, Arasiel Talaverodi, Arasiel Waldu, but the Sindika Vaited, Ur Jananaya Valley in the Pora Alihale, Ningal Mudaku, the Kor Pudia, Tilta Tek on the very river. Single about the Mela di Kenam, Ungla Mirkinda and the Inoviro the Sail Particle, in the Natale. Or Sirik Varada Vere, Ador Tirvuk Varada Vere, Ningal in a Sata Dirtam Kondu Vandalene, Ningal Ede Kondu Vandalum, Inga Irkan of Makale, Palina Makale, Undu Serta Mudima. But to Matakiana Trasta, the Velakime, Nitiak Natiratakia, Ekmek Hondane, Yakekne, Prabakaran, Doreapa, Hindu Kovil Atula Marui, May Panathanisad. But to Made, Turula, the end of May Panathe Atate, Arak Sakarapunisa, Obata Mataka, the Asuname, Obata Chandela, and the Berunane, Ada Demala, Samajeta, Naikat, the Napulanguka, Budimat Minisutika, Marada Punisa, Prabakaran, Ada Obata Chanseka, Kalatina Parliament to ten, A Minisutina, Watame, May Parliament to ten, Nambene. Rataka Jatika Araksava Kieneka, Ekame Singhala and Duda Demala and Duda Muslim, Ehema Andu Ne, because Sri Lanka Andu, Ekanisa Uwage, Moda Katagi and Depa, Ubawage, Mahajan and Yojito Inaka, Uture and Aganahira Demala Janata, Kawa Dawat, Sahane Akne, Ubala Tamai, Demala Janata in Sape, Tastama de Kina, Arta de Kim Pilimantama get Luthi, Pora de Okila Parta Besut, Tastava de Gandu, Yukuran de Pakila Kiwut, Tastava de Kilagan. Moving to other news, President Ranil Wickremesinghe has intimated that the presidential election will take place in September of this year, with parliamentary elections scheduled for the coming 2025 year. Sosa said that this was confirmed at a United National Party Working Committee meeting held at the Presidential Secretariat Office yesterday. It was also stated that the President had informed them that Provincial Council polls will also be held in April of 2025. The President will reportedly make an official statement in this regard after participating in the economic conference to be held in Switzerland and the non-aligned conference to be held in Uganda. It was thus decided at the committee meeting that the United National Party district conventions would commence from the Gaul district on the 13th of January, aimed at the presidential elections. Meanwhile, the United National Party said that the president said that President Ronald Wickremesinghe was selected as the candidate for the upcoming presidential elections. With that, let's take a look at what transpired in the political arena today. Janadipatuma, Sakalamanakar, Kamitu, Ekamat Koti Nekara, Exa Jatika Pakshe, Janadipati Apexa Kahatir, Ranil Vitrum Sangamatuma, Namkarana, Pikanga, Tavi, Kamatkawa, Ekap, Ekamapita, Idiri, the Tianoapi, Etuma, Pudua Pekshuka about Patkarana, but the winner we call Pekna Mira. Tamasinga Matia, Varasatana, be identified Karagano, Ekata Pratipaksava, E. Deshapalana, Agade, and Sa Bule, Elia Tendapulang, Varasatana, Ekana Pekshe, Katama, Katakari together, Mamma Pau Jerigo is Sakara. Program make a paradigm by an Sajibeka to be 
හැටියට තරම් කරන්න බලාපොරොත්තු වෙන්නේ ඒ ජනාධිපති මෙතුරෙන් පස්සේ අනිවාර්යයෙන්ම සදි ප්‍රේමදාස් මෙතුමාගේ ජයග්‍රහණය හරහා ඉතා ඉක්මනින් මහා මැතිවරණයකට අපි ඉදිරිපත් වෙනවා ඒකෙත් අනිවාර්යයෙන්ම මේ රටේ ජනතාවගේ විශ්වාසය දිනාගෙන අපි හොඳ ශක්තිමත් හරි ජාතික ප්‍රතිපත්තියක් තියෙන ආණ්ඩුවක් සදි ප්‍රේමදාස් මෙතුමාගේ ප්‍රධානත්වයෙන් අපි ආරම්භ කරනවා කියන එකත් මේ අවස්ථාවේදී කරන්න ඕනේ ජනාධිපතිවරණේ නිර්පාක්ෂව ඉදිරිපත් කරනවා අනිල් වික්‍රමසිංහ හැම පක්ෂෙම ජයග්‍රහණය කරන්න පුළුවන් විදිහකට හැම දිනාගෙම උදව්ව පතලා කටයුතු කරන එක තමයි තියෙන්නේ අද මොන වුණත් රනිල් වික්‍රමසිංහ එක ඡන්දකින් ජනාධිපති වෙනවා ඉතින් ඒකට හැම දිනාගෙම ඒ කියන්නේ සහාය පැතුලා අන්න ඒක තමයි අපි ඉදිරියට පුළුල් මට්ටමට ගෙනියන්න in strike news the paramedical services front today initiated a 48 hour token strike against the government's decision to increase the dat or disturbance availability and transport allowance provided only to state doctors with a separate demand of the allowance of 35000 rupees for their category as well as a result of the strike the measles and dengue control programs too came to a halt and the general public was greatly inconvenienced The 24-hour token strike launched yesterday by the supplementary medical professionals opposing the government's move to not grant the DAT or the disturbance availability and transport allowance to them came to an end this morning. However, per the announcement made yesterday, several trade unions affiliated with the Paramedical Services Front launched a 48-hour token strike today commencing at 8 a.m. The strike as such was initiated against the government's proposal to increase the DAT allowance provided to state doctors only while demanding an allowance of 35000 rupees for their categories as well. Accordingly the strike today was joined by 10 trade unions including the Public Health Inspectors Union of Sri Lanka, the Government Family Health Service Officers Association, the Drug Compounding Officers Association and the Government Nursing Officers Association. Nearly 25000 health employees were among them. However the dispensation of medicines continued unhindered at the children's hospital the cancer hospital the maternity hospital the kidney treatment hospital the central blood bank and the mental health institute as medicine dispensation in all state hospitals island wide came to a halt the general public continued to remain inconvenienced today In the meantime the Public Health Inspectors Union of Sri Lanka stated that members of the union had refused to engage in the measles and dengue control programs following the strike. Dengue mardana katiyul saha sarampa weda satahanak vishesha ennat kirim weda satahanak me dinawa kriyatmak wena e sambandha siyalu katiyuth me wenita athara damala thiyena mokada ekkandayamata vitarak vishesha salakillak dakwimata api dadi lesa hela dagena. Additionally employees of the Government Family Health Services Officers Association too joined the token strike today by reporting in sick. However the chairperson of the association Devika Koditwakku added that the strike will not take place at the Disoiza Maternity Hospital the Castle Street Hospital for Women and the Kettumathi Hospital for Women ek parshavayakata pamana me mudala wedi kirima kiyana karaneyat ekka me saukya sheshre anekut vurtikeyanwa nosalaka harimak siddha karala thiyena ඒ පිළිබඳව අපි අමාත්‍ය මණ්ඩලයට අපේ කනගාටුව මේ අවස්ථාවේදී ප්‍රකාශ කරනවා. In conjunction with the 48 hour token strike today, the government's nursing officers association too initiated a nationwide strike today commencing from 7 a.m. Concurrently a protest was held in front of the Colombo National Hospital by the government nursing officers association. Meanwhile all health trade unions that engaged in the strike today held a joint press conference this afternoon. මේ වෙනකොට පරිපූරක වෛද්‍ය සේවාව, අතුරු වෛද්‍ය සේවාව, හෙද සේවාව ආරම්භ කරලා තියෙන වර්ජන ක්‍රියා මාර්ගයට හෙට උදෑසන 6 සිට රෝහල් ලේකම්වරුන්, පරිපාලන නිලධාරීන්, කලමනාකරණ සහකාර නිලධාරීන්, කනිෂ්ඨ කාර්ය මණ්ඩලයේ රෝහල් වසියවරු සියලු සෞඛ්‍ය සේවාවට අයත් කාර්ය මණ්ඩලයේ එකතු වෙන්නට තීරණය කරලා තියෙනවා. හෙට දවසේ උදෑසන 6ට හදිසි තීන්දුවක් විදියට ලංකාවේ සෞඛ්‍ය සේවාවේ සියලු ලුම වෘත්තීන් ඒක රාශි වෙච්ච වර්ධන ක්‍රියාමාර්ගයකට යනවා අපි ලබන අඟහරු ආදා වෙනකොට සෞඛ්‍ය අමාත්‍යාංශයෙන් ජනාධිපතිවරයාගෙන් උත්තරයක් නැත්තම් සමස්ත සෞඛ්‍ය සේවාව ඒක රාශි වෙලා ඒ සාධාරණයේ වෙනුවෙන් අරගල බිමට එනවා DIG Kalinga Jayasinghe confirmed that the serious crimes rate has decreased by 11% during the end of 2023 compared to the corresponding period of 2022 largely due to the Yuktia police operation Speaking of which during the island wide operation a person was arrested with methamphetamine worth 400000 rupees in the Attidi area today The special Yuktia operation which is in place to curb drug trafficking and other organized crime continued for its 24th consecutive day today 
Following raids conducted yesterday, a suspect who engaged in online drug trafficking was apprehended along with 30 grams of methamphetamine worth 400,000 rupees in the Attidia area. During the arrest, police recovered 200,000 rupees suspected to have been earned from drug trafficking, two mobile phones, an electronic scale and a passport. Meanwhile, a special operation executed by the Veangaro police yesterday led to the arrest of two wanted suspects, alias Anna and Bakova, who were reportedly involved in a number of robberies across the island. Per police reports, jewellery worth more than 2 million rupees, two motorbikes and a stock of heroin were found in the possession of the suspects. Accordingly, over the past 24 hours, a total of 999 suspects were arrested, with investigations currently being conducted on detention orders regarding 31 of them. In addition, during a news briefing today, the Deputy Inspector General in charge of the Crimes Division stated that with the initiation of the Yuktia Special Operations Police Program, a significant decrease in serious crimes had been observed thus far this year, compared to the same period last year. निरीक्षण her Royal Highness Princess Anne, the Princess Royal of the United Kingdom, arrived in Sri Lanka and was ceremoniously welcomed at the Bandarnaka International Airport today. The monarch and her spouse have a series of high-level visits scheduled, starting off with the royals calling on President Ranul Vikramasinghe a short while ago. Her visit is, is expected to last up to the 13th of January in a visit which comes as both Sri Lanka and the UK mark 75 years of diplomatic relations. The Royal Princess of the United Kingdom and the only sister of King Charles III, Her Royal Highness Princess Anne, arrived in Sri Lanka this afternoon for a three-day visit. Both the princess and her spouse, Vice Admiral Sir Timothy Lawrence, were welcomed by British High Commissioner in Colombo, Andrew Patrick, and a Sri Lankan delegation including Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ali Sabri. A ceremony was held at the VIP launch of the Bandaranaike International Airport to ceremoniously welcome the monarchs. In a statement, the British High Commission in Colombo said that the visit of Princess Anne comes as both Sri Lanka and the UK mark 75 years of diplomatic relations. During her visit, she is expected to meet high-level officials of the government and visit sacred sites, including the Temple of the Tooth Relic in Kandy. Meanwhile, this evening, Princess Anne called on President Ranil Vikramasinghe for a visit. Welcome back. In its forecast, the Department of Meteorology stated that the prevailing showers are expected to reduce in the northern, north-central, Uva and eastern provinces from tomorrow onwards. Meanwhile, several roads in the country remain blocked for traffic movement following the heavy rains. Torrential rains continued to build down in parts of the country today, disrupting the lives of the general public. Traffic was obstructed at the 7th mile post area in Haliela on the Badulla Colombo main road due to landslides which occurred as a result of extreme rains. Measures were taken to hamper vehicular movement in the area due to risk of landslides. As such, the Bandaravela Ettampitiya road and the Demodara Springvale road can temporarily be used as an alternative route. Meanwhile, the Department of Examinations announced that alternative examination centres are available for students currently sitting the A-level examinations. Accordingly, candidates who are unable to travel from Badulla to Bandaravela can sit for the exam at the Badulla Central College and candidates who are unable to travel from Bandaravela to Badulla can sit the exam at the Bandaravela Central College. The department further added that candidates should arrive at the examination centres 45 minutes prior to the commencement of the exam. Further, four vehicles were completely damaged after a mound of earth collapsed onto a garage in which the vehicles were parked. The incident was recorded on a nearby CCTV camera. Residents of the area since have been advised to remain vigilant as the risks of landslides of the Tantiriya Patana mountain in Bandarola has intensified. In other news, the Badulla Bibili road has been completely blocked from the Arvakumura area due to landslides following the extreme rains. Clearing of the road is currently underway. Amidst the heavy rains, traffic movement on the Nuwarelia Badulla main road has completely halted as a tree and a few large rocks collapsed onto the road. 
Further, as a result of the heavy mist on the Kepetipula Norelia main road, the police urged drivers to remain vigilant while driving. Subsequently, the National Building Research Organization issued ambulance light warnings to parts of the Kandy, Mathale, Munragala and Norelia districts. In other related news, heavy rains further led to the spillover of several reservoirs and as a result, sluice gates have remained open. The Med Department meanwhile forecasted that the prevailing rains are expected to reduce in the northern, north central, U and eastern provinces and the provinces and Hambantara district. Looking at stocks news, shares closed lower at the Colombo Stock Exchange today for a third straight day dragged down by losses in communication services and industrial stocks. The CSE All Share Index closed 0.5% lower at 10,665.84 points, falling for three straight sessions. This is on the back of Sri Lanka's central bank considering moving towards a single policy rate mechanism to ensure better signaling of its monetary policy stance per CBSR Governor Nandalal Virasinghe. Sri Lanka Telecom PLC and Expo Lanka Holdings PLC were the top losers on the index, falling 2.17% and 1.22% respectively. Trading volume fell to 23.1 million shares from 45.5 million shares in the previous session. Equity market turnover rose to 523 million rupees from 518 million rupees in the previous session. Foreign investors were net sellers, offloading stocks worth 135.1 million rupees, while domestic investors were net buyers, purchasing shares worth 494.2 million rupees. We now have Udish and Jonas from Capital Alliance with some thoughts on the current status of the economy of the country in our next segment, Sri Lanka's Economic Outlook. On economic news this week, we saw the average weighted prime lending rate fall by a further 26 basis points to 11.87%, while the Treasury bill and Treasury bond rates were almost stable during the week. At present, the one-year Treasury bill rates uh, remain at 12.9%, while the three-month rates are hovering around the 14 and a half mark. We feel that as and when the government increases its long-term borrowings, we feel that the three-month Treasury bill rates could start falling down even further. From an inflation perspective, we feel that the month of January could see a significant surge in terms of inflation, not only due to the VAT impact, but also due to the adverse weather conditions which are continuing into January. As a result, we feel that inflation could be in the high 6 to 7 percent levels for the month of January. And until adverse weather conditions adjust downwards, this trend could continue into the month of February and March as well. However, we feel that the electricity tariff reduction could range between 5 to 10 percent in the coming month. Overall, in terms of economic activity, we saw the month of December seeing a significant pickup in terms of retail activity, but going into January with the impact of VAT coming into place and inflation, we are seeing a slowdown in terms of consumption for the month of January. Also from a currency perspective, Sri Lanka also reported foreign reserves at $4.4 billion at the end of December, and this was driven by mainly the $750 million coming in from the multilateral agencies such as IMF, ADB and World Bank, and also the improvement in current account which has been facilitated by improved tourism and work remittances reported during the last quarter of 2023. Work remittances reported a high of $537 million, which is one of the record levels for the month of 2023. Since the currency has been on an appreciation spree over the last two, three weeks, we feel that if the current trend kind of continues with Sri Lanka having a current account surplus, the government could consider relaxing some part of the vehicle imports. And there have been talks about relaxing import relaxations on smaller vehicles if the current account is showing positive results going into second quarter of next year. From a commodities perspective, we've seen crude oil being quite volatile during the first two weeks of January, and this has been particularly because of the geopolitical tensions in the Gaza Strip as well as the Red Sea having an impact on, on crude oil prices. However, the U.S. continues to, to have a surplus in terms of its oil inventory, which has kind of mitigated the impact of the geopolitical tensions. As a result, over the last two weeks, we haven't overall seen too much of an increase in terms of oil prices as such.
With that, let's take a look at how the rupee traded against other major currencies during the day. Sri Lanka's Union Bank has announced a new Deputy Chief Executive Officer for the bank that will be taking office from the 15th of January this year. Meanwhile, in other news, the Sri Lanka Association of Software Services Companies and Women Technopreneurs Forum col collaborate, collaborates with USAID um, to address the country's workforce gap due to skill migration. Union Bank announces the appointment of Dilshan Rodrigo as Deputy Chief Executive Officer with effect from the 15th of January 2024. Rodrigo last served as the Executive Director Chief Operating Officer at Hatton National Bank and has held many senior positions in multiple industries ranging from banking, insurance, investment banking and apparel. He presently functions as a Director of the Credit Information Bureau of Sri Lanka and has served as Chairman of H&B Finance PLC and the Lanka Financial Services Bureau. In other news, in a move to boost women's employment in the information technology industry in Sri Lanka and help fill a workforce gap caused by the migration of IT professionals, the Sri Lanka Association of Software Services Companies and Women Technopreneurs Forum in collaboration with the United States Agency for International Development or USAID launched She Returns, a program to bring women back to the tech sector. Slascom and USAID's Catalyze Sri Lanka private sector development activity launched She Returns at an event recently held in Colombo. She Returns will offer a comprehensive training to qualified women in the IT and business process management industries who have left the industry and want to return, women seeking to transition into the field and underemployed women in the field seeking to enhance their skills. TechStrip Private Limited, a subsidiary of Elasto Holdings, won a total of three awards at the Ceylon National Chamber of Industries or CNCI Achievers Awards and the National Chamber of Exports NCE Awards 2023. TechStrip claimed the Silver Award in the National Level Large Scale Category Manufacturing Sector and the Gold Award in the Provincial Level Large Scale Category Manufacturing Sector at the CNCI Awards. TechStrip was also honoured with the Silver Award in Large Scale Category Rubber and Rubber Products Sector at the NCE Exports Awards 2023. A special meeting between Sports Minister Harin Fernando and Chief Executive Officer of the International Cricket Council, Jeff Allardyce, took place per an announcement by the Minister today. The Ministry of Sport stated that the problems that have risen with regards to cricket in Sri Lanka were discussed at length. Another delegation from the International Cricket Council was also present at the meeting and on behalf of Sri Lanka, Sports Minister Harin Fernando, CEO of Sri Lanka Cricket Ashley De Silva were present at the meeting. Following the discussion, the Sports Ministry stated that the Chief Executive Officer of the International Cricket Council is also scheduled to meet President Ranil Vikramasinghe today. That's all the news I have for you for now. I'm Jonathan Benedict. Have a blessed Thursday ahead. Good night. <laughs>